Hi everyone, it's Momo from SCC. I coach our Open All Girl Level 5 team called Lady Rain, and we're one of the team that was supposed to go to Worlds this year. Obviously, the athletes are devastated, but considering the situation, the team has been super positive and they're still working hard on things they can do at home. So that has been really good. And when we usually go to Worlds, we stay in big houses in Orlando and what we do is we separate our athletes into smaller groups and they take turns to cook dinner for each other. So this year, even though we cannot travel to Orlando and compete at Worlds, I've decided that they should still cook for each other virtually. And some of our younger athletes have never even cooked before, so it has been a quite interesting experience for them. This show has been put together by Athletes on Lady Rain, and I think they all had fun doing this, and I hope you enjoy the show as well. Hi, I'm Estella, and today we'll be making fairy bread, but not just any fairy bread, the most exquisite fairy bread you've ever seen. All right, so first thing that you're gonna to need to start the fairy bread is some fresh white bread and some softened butter so it doesn't tear the bread when you try and spread it. Also, make sure that you put the butter all the way to the edges of the bread. So now that you have your bread buttered, it's time to move on to the next step. However, if you're wanting to keep your fairy bread more simple and old school, you can put the hundreds and thousands on right now, but this next step makes it taste that much better. So this next step is the most important one. You have to choose an assortment of cookie cutters and align it on the bread so that you don't waste too much of the bread, but still try and avoid cutting the crusts. All right, so I'm just gonna move these scraps to the side and we'll come back to them later. And now we're ready for our next step, which is putting hundreds of thousands on the bread. And using the scraps that we put to the side before, well, they're for the chef. Alright, so the final stage is to plate up your exquisite snack. Fairy bread doesn't get much more exquisite than this. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any more of the coming episodes. Hey guys, welcome to today's main meal portion of the Furious 5 cooking show. My name is Lauren, I'm a flyer on Lady Rain, and today I'll be showing you how to make some homemade gnocchi. This recipe is super simple and easy to follow for people that have never made gnocchi before, and I find that it's the perfect consistency, and you can use it with a variety of sauces, but today I'll be having it with homemade bolognese. So if you want to just keep on watching, I'll show you how to do it. So first off, you need to peel your potatoes and let them boil in a pot on the stove until they become nice and soft. You can check this by applying slight pressure to the potato with a knife. If it slides easily through, they're ready to go. Next step is mashing your potatoes. You can do this manually or with an electric appliance. Remember to make sure that you're thorough with this, leaving no hard pieces in the mix. And when you're done, leave them to cool for the next hour. Once the potatoes are cool, grab your flour, your cheese, and some salt and pepper and set them aside and ready to go. Now, begin scooping out your potatoes into your blender, which should roughly equal around four full cups. Next, add two cups of plain flour to this mix. Crack some pepper and add a bit of salt. And then, add two to three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Once everything has been added, you can then turn on your blender and let it process until everything has been mixed well and the consistency is thick. Now add some flour onto a clean surface to prevent the mix from sticking to the bench and use your hands to spread the flour out to ensure an even layer. The next step is creating the gnocchi shape. To do so, grab a handful from your pile, knead the dough, 
Coat it in flour until it loses its stickiness and becomes firm and begin rolling it out with your hands. If you make a mistake, you can always add it back to the original pile of dough and start again with a bit of extra kneading. Your dough should eventually look similar to a rope of whatever length is easiest to manage for you, but the width should be roughly an inch wide. Next, begin slicing your dough into bite-sized pieces. I like to think of them as being roughly the size of your finger pads, but this can easily vary to your own personal taste. An optional step is to grab a fork and press each gnocchi square from the base of the fork prong to the top. Continue this and place each square to a flour coated plate. Now, just continue to repeat these steps until all of the dough has been used. After this is all completed, take a break and allow your gnocchi to settle for at least an hour. Once the time is up, start up the stove and add some olive oil and salt to the water and then wait until boiling point. Once the water begins to bubble, add your gnocchi squares in piece at a time to prevent excess flour from falling into the pot. Give it a good stir to ensure that they don't stick together and wait to cook through. Gnocchi is super quick to cook and shouldn't take longer than five minutes. However, an easy way to tell is when the gnocchi begins to completely rise to the surface. Being careful, strain your gnocchi in the sink and give it a little shake to remove the excess water. Move your gnocchi to your bowl or plate and add however much bolognese and cheese as you desire. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching my little tutorial on how to make homemade gnocchi and I hope you enjoyed it. Hi guys, it's Casey from Lady Rain. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to make enchiladas with chicken and vegetables.
Hey guys, Caitlin from Lady Rain. Today I'm gonna to take you through how to make burnt butter and salted maple sticky buns. So for this recipe, you will need dry yeast, two eggs, ooh, milk, allspice, salt, a whole bunch of maple syrup, butter, brown sugar, and some plain flour. All right, let's get started. And that is a wrap on Lady Rain's first ever ISO cooking adventure video. We really hope you enjoyed it. We definitely enjoyed making it. Make sure you like this video if you did. Comment down below if you tried to make any of the dishes and how they turned out for you. Whether you'd like to see anything in the future. Um, and make sure you definitely click that notification bell at the top of our page and subscribe. So you're the first to know when we next upload because there are more of these to come. Awesome. Thanks guys.